You're listening to the Crew Book Club podcast, the show that challenged you to change your mindset through hearing about dope books. Thanks for hanging with the crew to get advice, ask questions, and gain knowledge with me, your host, Sade Hill. What up, crew? What's good? Welcome to another episode of the Crew Book Club podcast. I am so locked in, your host, Sade Hill. Let's get in to it because it's juicy it's good this is juicy information okay and baby this who gonna check me boo oh my goodness lock in lock in right now first and foremost how are you guys feeling i hope you're feeling good feeling great hey feeling good feeling great how are you uh me personally i'm feeling better I was just on Instagram before I got onto the pod saying how I had this whole T-Rex moment that my husband called it where I was like, eh, 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 eh. and my family was like, okay, we need to leave mommy alone. <laughs> and they did. Um, but it was really boiled down to communication. And yesterday was not a feel good day for me. Today is a lot better. I recognize where I was at. I expressed myself and listened to some gospel, listened to this really good sermon and God checked me. And now we here with better energy. Okay. So do what you got to do to check yourself. Okay, and give yourself a minute and communicate and use the people around you that love and support you. You hear me? Okay. (laughs) And after listening to this pie, you're going to be like, girl, thank you for a whole word. And I'm feeling better now. So you can go and take over the world after we after you listen to this pie. Okay, girl. All right. So let's get into it. We're getting into our book. We're still in part one of the one thing by Gary Keller and we're in the part one where it's like the lies they mislead and derail us so we're going to get into chapters uh six and seven but first before we even get into that let's get into some who gonna check me boo God is because he is always checking us and we deserve a good check Zach yes let's get checked by the Lord (laughs) Okay, if anybody gonna check me, I would rather him do it. And this week, I've been checked so many times. So it was really hard to decipher which check to give y'all. I was gonna try to give y'all two and one, but it would have been the whole episode. You hear me? So we're gonna get into the scripture that particularly align with the life I'm living right now. And it really made me realize the balance of being a woman, a mom, a wife, and a serial entrepreneur. Um, even if you're not a wife or a serial entrepreneur, it shows the virtue of a woman in this particular scripture. And I just loved how it broke down. And I'm gonna give you some of the key ones that really knocked out for me, that knocked me out, that checked me. And but I highly not but and I highly recommend that you guys go and read the entire thing. It was Proverbs chapter 31 verses 10 through 31. And I'm going to get into these. These are my faves. Okay, chapter 10 verse 11 Proverbs. Her husband was fully confident in her and lacks nothing of value. Okay, her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. Whew. The support that your husband should be to you is full of confidence. Okay, I was just like, yes. Okay, chapter 10, verse 16 through 18, Proverbs. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees her trading is profitable and her lamp doesn't go out at night. Ooh, it was some bars in there. Let me tell you something. The first, she considers a field and buys it. Women, we we can own the land, okay? And oh, there's a whole nother book I'm reading about. We should all be millionaires. That's going to tap into that directly. Women's statistics about how we've been handled in this society when it comes to money, okay? And then when I was just like, when it said, 
she sets about her work vigorously. Yes, we work hard, ladies. Her arms are strong for her task, meaning we can hold it, we can do it. You know what I'm saying? In that part where she was like, the trading is profitable, baby. We can make this money. You hear me? <laughs> God said it. <laughs> okay. Chapter uh, 10, verse 25 through 27 says, she is clothed with strength and dignity. Dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. Okay, baby, we are strong. I am strong. And I'm sitting here looking at myself in the camera and telling it. So you can go watch YouTube and say it with me. You are strong and we have dignity and we laugh at the days that come. No matter what it is, we laughable because we have a God who covers us and who allows us to live through his strength to give us strength and the dignity to press forward. You hear me? It says she speaks with wisdom and faithful instructions on her tongue. Okay. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. This spoke to me because I was com I was comfy not knowing all the dealings of the ins and out of the finances and things of that nature because it was like this privilege of having this pain and doing you know what I'm saying and being able to dive into um the business even though the involuntary things that happened during COVID it was just like instead of slumming down and and balling up in a wall, I found a way, okay? You found a way, <laughs> okay? And that does not eat the bread of idleness. I didn't depend on the government to tell me how and when I could move. No, I found a way to use the tools that I had to do what I had to do, which birthed the, the crew book club, okay? So those are just a few. <laughs> Y'all, I'm telling you, you need to get into it. It was Proverbs chapter 10. I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 31. Do yourself a favor and read this. I said, I need to print this whole thing and let it be the affirmations that I read every day. Okay, it's in the word of God, like right there, y'all, right there. Okay, girl, you gonna thank me later. <laughs> okay, let's get into this book and continue with part one of the book, The Lies. They mislead and derail us in the one thing. This one thing has got me tripping. A. This one thing, no one to admit it, you think. It just works perfect for this book. <laughs> um, but anywho, chapter six, the lie of a disciplined life. And it, I'm going to hit right in the beginning of the chapter. It says, the truth is we don't need any more discipline than we already have. We just need to direct and manage it a little better. So good. On chapter 55, it continues, when we know something that needs to be done but isn't currently getting done, we often say, I just need more discipline. Actually, we need the habit of doing it and we need just enough discipline to build the habit. Further down, it says, so when you see people who look like, quote unquote, discipline, i.e. me, <laughs> what you're really seeing is people who've trained a handful of habits into their lives. This makes them seem disciplined when actually they're not. No one is. That is me. That is me. I ain't even going to sit here and sit here and lie. Okay, it also says, in fact, you can become successful with less discipline than you think for one simple reason. Success is about doing the right thing, not about doing everything right. Wow. I gave up trying to be right in everything and just focus on being right in the things that I need to do and be right in. Big deal. A lot of us waste time on trying to be right in arguments and things that has nothing to do with our lives and our purpose. And the things that we should be implementing. Hmm. Sit on that, sis. Listen, this doesn't come from somebody that's been doing this for 10 plus years. This is coming from somebody who's been doing this for two, almost two and a half years. Because I really got my life together the end of 2020. Like July 2020. That's when I started 75 Hard for the first time. So, come on now. And if imagine if I wouldn't have tried doing these things little bit by little bit cultivated and movement to other things that I'm doing now so that's where I see the difference okay 
I took what I needed to be disciplined in the right things. And that's what made a difference. So I get this question all the time. How do you do it all? And it's not doing it all. It's just doing the right all. (laughs) Okay. All right. So maybe this is how I need to explain it. How he said it on page 56. He says, what you will be is someone who has something regularly working for you because you regularly worked on it. You'll be a person who used selected discipline to build a powerful habit. Reading books was a selective discipline. Being going to the gym was a selective habit that I chose and that cultivated into where I'm in today because reading books implemented knowledge and it gave me power. Okay, and so which led to this podcast, which is leading to masterminds and which could lead to one on one coaching like that small habit of reading 10 pages a day has turned into this. So what small habit do you need to be doing to turn into what? Okay, on page 57, it says the payoff from developing the right habit is pretty obvious. It gets you to the successes you're searching for. Oh, this is so good. What sometimes gets overlooked, however, is an amazing windfall. It also simplifies your life. Your life gets clearer and less complicated because you know what you have to do well and you know what you don't. When you do the right thing, it can liberate you from having to monitor everything. Oh, this is so good. I hope you guys are really catching that power in this in this chapter. Okay, let's go to page 58. So it says here, so how long do you have to maintain discipline? Researchers at University of College of London have answers. In 2009, they asked the question, how long does it take to establish a new habit? They were looking for the moment when a new behavior became automatic or ingrained. The point of automaticity came when participants were 95% through the power curve and the effort it needed to sustain it about as low as it could get. There's a graph that shows how the habit forms, okay? They ask students to take an exercise and diet goals for a period of time and monitor their progress. The results suggest that it takes an average of 66 days to acquire a new habit. And they range it from 18 to 254 days. But around the 66th day, it became present a sweet spot with easier behaviors taking fewer days on average and tough ones taking longer. Okay, so that whole 21 day thing, that's out the door. Research doesn't even support that. It just sounds pretty. Okay, and that's what I love about 75 hard. It goes beyond the 66 days and at least one of them habits you're going to continue for the rest of your life. Like mine was reading 10 pages a day and working out from I was going from no working out barely to at least minimum one a day. Okay, and it also says here it takes time to develop the right habit. So don't give up so soon. Decide what the right one. There's that one thing is they give yourself all the time you need to apply all the discipline you can summon to develop it. That's that becomes the issue. That was my issue. I would be honing on one thing for a little while and then I felt like I wasn't getting the results I needed. So I would quit. It's not enough time. It's not enough time. So we have to give ourselves time. Okay. All right. That was chapter seven. (laughs) Was that? Yes. So that was the end of chapter, um, chapter six about the lie of a disciplined life. It's not that we need more discipline. We just need to apply the discipline to the right things. Okay. All right, so that's how we get extraordinary results. It says here, harness the power of selected discipline to build the right habit and extraordinary results will find you. I'm trying to tell you. I was just looking at another podcast clip, Sleep is for Suckers. Um, I don't totally agree with that name. I feel like you should get some sleep, but I also haven't researched the reason about how the name, so I can't really comment on that. But anywho, I like um, the guy who's behind the pod and the, and the girl. And... He was saying like a lot of us creators or people who they're trying to find purpose, but they're not doing anything to find the purpose and not realizing once you think one thing is your purpose, it's going to lead you into other things. And I even discovered that in the way God, the way God has been operating for me, it's like, I need you to do this thing before I can take you to this thing. And then when I take you to that thing and you complete that thing, there's going to be another purpose to that thing. You know what I'm saying? So it's not always one 
solidified purpose. It could be one solidified purpose in this season, in this moment, that's going to take you to the next assignment. Okay. So instead of, oh, we talked about, oh, let's bring it back full circle. In the Who Gonna Check Me, we talked about does not eat the bread of idleness. Let's stop being idle and do things that can lead us to figuring out our purpose. Bam. That's a whole nother conversation. You hear me? All right, back to the book, The One Thing. (laughs) Chapter seven, willpower is always on will call. The lie, okay? (laughs) Let's go to page 62 in the chapter. It says here, well, let me ask you, you know what willpower is? I had to look it up. Willpower, it says it here in the book too, on page 62, the ability to control oneself to determine one's action. Ooh, okay. It says also, it's a very pretty powerful idea, you would say. It sounds pretty, right? Okay, base it on training, it is called discipline. But do it because you simply can. That's raw power, the power of will. Okay, so he said, it seems so straightforward. It invoked my will and success was mine. I was on my way. Sadly, I didn't need to pack much. For it was a short trip. (laughs) It says here, as I set out to impose my will against defeatless goals, I quickly discovered something discouraging. It didn't, I didn't always have willpower. My willpower seemed to come and go as if it had a life of its own. Building success around full strength on demand willpower provided unsuccessful. My initial thoughts was, what's wrong with me? Was I a loser? We do this to ourselves because it's like, I should be, I was so excited about this. I had the will and the power to do this. But check this out, y'all. Willpower isn't will call. You can't just call it up when you when you want to, okay? It, it's connected to your to your body too. Listen, my willpower wasn't just sitting around waiting for my call, ready at the moment to enforce my will on anything I wanted. Most people assume willpower matters, but many might not fully appreciate how critical it is to your success. Mm, We've been using it wrong. It says here, and I like the example how he puts it, willpower, renewable energy. Think about it. Think of willpower like the power bar on your cell phone. Every morning you start with a full charge. As the day goes on, every time you draw on, you're using it up. So every time we draw on our willpower, we're using it up. Willpower has a limited battery life, but can be recharged with some downtime. That was that was me the other day, my T-Rex moment, okay? <laughs> it's a limited but renewable resource because you have a limited supply. Each act of will creates a win-lose scenario where winning an immediate situation through willpower makes you more likely to lose later because you're using that energy in something else. So as a result, page 65, we don't consider it a personal resource managed like food or sleep. This reportedly puts us in a tight spot from when we need our willpower the most. Okay, so this is what we need to understand. Food for thought. All right. Think of your an example in the book. He was like, think of your brain. It takes up one fifth, but it uses one fifth of the calorie to burn energy. So your brain is like a car. And he said, in terms of mileage, it's like a Hummer. Y'all, you, I don't know if you ever drove a Hummer. I had a friend who owned a Hummer and they would literally be like, I just filled up and to get one, to get to a small area, it's like I'm already on half. So let's think about how we're using that. And that is resulting to food for thought on page 66 through 67. That's why our diets are so important. If you look at high achievers, they have a better diet. Okay, to be able to prepare your body for the successes that you need. All right. So that's where your diet is important when it comes to your willpower. And how do you feel after you eat certain things? All right. I like how he puts it here. When your will on page 68, when your willpower runs out, we all revert to our default settings. We get tired. We get lazy with ourselves. Listen here, the begs the question, what are your default settings? Do you recognize your default settings? I'm I'm recognizing mine, okay? It says here, if your willpower is dragging, would you grab the bag of carrots or chips? 
Will you be focusing on the work at hand or down for many distractions as they drop in? When your most important work is done while your willpower wanes, default will define your level of achievement. Average is often the results. So we have to realize when our willpower is defleeting. I know for me, if I realize I'm picking up my phone, I'm getting distracted, and I'm avoiding doing the work, I need to sit back, take a break, find some downtown and recharge. And that was me yesterday because I was getting outside of my normal self that I've worked so hard to get to because I have an event where it's the biggest audience I've had since I've been doing events. I went from my first event, what being 15 people to my mastermind being a smaller group to now I'm gonna be talking to 43 people tomorrow. Like it's, and I was getting outside of myself and trying to do everything instead of focusing, sitting back, and recharging my willpower to be prepared for what's next, okay? So, and another thing that I've learned is I had to pivot when I worked out in the day because I realized my willpower is defeated by 3, o'clock, three 4 o'clock because I wake up so early. I wake up around 4.35. So, I was just like, so let me do all my administrative things first and then get into the rest of the day. You know what I'm saying? And I know I'm going to be able to work out because I love working out. It's And also working out and charges you. When I'm about 10 minutes in, I'm locked in. <laughs> okay. But I also know I can't work out past 930 because it was, I had an event where I didn't get home to really, really late and I still had to bust out while workout. But I realized like that doesn't work for me. I was, I was, I did the workout, but it was not with the best willpower. All right, so you have to find out the best time of the day to do your hardest task. And he talks about that too on page 69. It says, give willpower the time of day, okay? Without intentionally protecting it every day, we allow ourselves to go from will and way to no will to no way. If success is what you're after, this won't work, okay? You make doing what matters most a priority when your willpower is its highest. So that's why we have to schedule those things to have in place. So we're using our willpower for the right things and not just for anything. Okay. I really love how he broke down willpower and I hope you receive how discipline is a lie. We got enough discipline, child. (laughs) You just need to be applying it to the right things. And also how to use your best willpower in your time of the day and eating the right foods and things to give to help intensify your willpower and to keep it going. Okay. Woo, that was a lot of good juicy, juicy information from this book. So I highly recommend getting it. You can definitely listen to it on Audible. We have that partnership with them as well, where you get uh, a 30 days free of a premium experience and you can listen to this book. Also, our other partnership, which you guys have to lock in with BetterHelp. We have that partnership where you get 10% off of therapy. That's a That could be your habit that you need to be disciplined in is going to therapy. It will absolutely change your life. Maybe the next 12 weeks, this is your one thing that you focus on before we meet, not 12 weeks, before we meet for the next mastermind, April 1st, maybe the one thing you need to do is say, you know what, I'm going to be consistent in going to therapy once once a week. And better that we have this relationship with BetterHelp, you can get 10% off. So go to betterhelp.com slash love. The link is also in the show notes and get your 10% off of professional therapy. I use it. I've used it. Um, I need to get back to it, (laughs) Um, but I have used it in the past. It is my go-to. Okay. And so you go to betterhelp.com slash crew love. That's better. H E L P.com slash crew love. Get you some help crew. All right. So let's get into the challenge of the week. And I hope you have a sneaky suspicion of what the challenge of the week is. Uh Your challenge of the week is don't fight the willpower. You know how they say that song? Fight the power. Don't fight the willpower, okay? I don't want you to fight the willpower. Here, on page 71, it talks about this. One, don't spread your willpower too thin. Two, monitor your your fuel gauge. 
Full strength willpower requires full tank. Never let what matters most be compromised simply because your brain under fuel. Eat right and regularly. Okay, time your task. Do what matters most first each day when your willpower is the strongest. Maximum strength willpower re- means maximum success. Okay, and find your motivation. All right, you know, the belief about your willpower also impact your self-control. So I want you to focus on all things willpower this week, all right? And don't fight your willpower. Build your days around how it works and let it do its part to build your life. That was on page 71, Big Ideas. I really want you guys this week to discipline the habit of your willpower. Ooh, that was good, okay? So take notes. Find out this space in the pod, look at the time, go back and listen to this and write this down. Or you can also order the book. That link is in the show notes. So you can actually highlight and follow along with these challenges of the week. Also, you can list, you can catch it on Audible so you can fast forward and rewind the book. Because I really want you guys to implement these challenges. I don't give challenges that I haven't completed. Okay, <laughs> this is stuff. I ain't telling you what I think. I'm telling you what I know. And, and what has actually worked, all right? And this book is a bestseller, so obviously it's working for others. So don't let don't let your mind consume all this information and don't put it into play because all you're doing is cheating yourself and wasting your time, okay? All right, so please, 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 I didn't get an email or a DM about any advice. So the advice that I have for you is do the challenge of the week this week. That's the crew advice this week. Okay. All right. Let's end this episode. This was a shorter episode. Oh my gosh. I could have did a whole nother chapter. Anywho, anywho, that just holds some responsibility for y'all. I need you guys to ask me some advice so I can give it to you straight. All right. You can send your questions to email the crew book club at gmail.com or you can just simply DM me on IG at the crew book club. All right. I hope to help you follow, share and tell a friend. And we cannot end this episode without a quote of the week. Hey, the quote of the week. I said this on my Instagram, but I feel like I need to say it again to you all. Listen, care about yourself so much that you make boundaries and you stick to them. All right. So crew, go out into the world and protect your willpower and make your boundaries and stick to them, boo. All right, I will see you all right here next week on the Crew Book Club Podcast. Hey. Want to be a part of the crew? Hit that follow button so you'll never miss an episode. And while you're at it, I would appreciate you showing crew love by rating the show on iTunes and Spotify. Don't keep all this goodness to yourself. Share and tell a friend so your whole crew can be growing with you. Let me be the first to tell you, welcome to the crew.